Early in 2023, the Brazilian Navy startled the whole world, captivating the attention of those who had closely followed its flagship story. Deliberately, they orchestrated the sinking of the illustrious aircraft carrier Sao Paulo in the vast expanse of the Atlantic Ocean. Although the type served well from the start of the century, the former French ship was built in the 1950s and required far more than a mere refit. But after unsuccessful attempts to properly scrap the vessel, and under immense pressure from the international community and relentless environmentalists, the fate of the proud carrier floated adrift. Meanwhile, cloaked in a shroud of ambiguity, the Navy withheld intricate particulars of the operation and commenced the haunting operation to submerge the decommissioned aircraft carrier into the abyss. But as she met her demise and vanished into the boundless ocean, she took down with her a noxious substance, endangering the fragile balance of the underwater world. A Matter of Stature Sao Paulo began her journey in France in the late 1950s. At that time, she was known as Foch and served as a proud vessel in the French Navy. However, as years passed, the carrier started showing signs of aging, and it was time for a change. Indeed, the French Navy replaced her with Charles de Gaulle in 2000. That fall, France agreed to sell the vessel to Brazil under the condition that the country remained the final user of the time-worn ship. And thus, Brazil purchased the carrier for the modest sum of $12 million to replace their old World War II-era carrier, Minas Gerais, which had faithfully served the country for over four decades. After the acquisition, the carrier bid farewell to her French identity and made her way to Brazil with a new name, Sao Paulo. In the meantime, the government had also secured a squadron of 23 used A-4 Skyhawk fighter planes from Kuwait. These aircraft, along with the existing helicopters and national defense inventory, were chosen to form the Sao Paulo Fighter Bomber Group. The A-4s, now designated as AF-1, could carry various weapons, including rockets, freefall bombs, and sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. The ship joined the Brazilian fleet in November 2000, becoming the evolving Navy's pride and marking the crystallization of the nation's long-held goal, being capable of naval aerial defense with fixed-wing aircraft. In the words of President Fernando Enrique Cardozo, quote, A country is ours, possessing an extensive coast, with more than 7,000 kilometers of coast, requires a naval power compatible with its stature in the international scene. Few countries, even today, have the capacity to operate with efficiency in the high seas. It is important that Brazil continues to be one of them. A Dark Cloud Sao Paulo and her sister aircraft carriers in the Clemenceau class were designed with a conventional catabar, or catapult-assisted takeoff barrier arrested recovery layout. Still, by the 21st century, Sao Paulo was the last remaining carrier of her class. Her flight deck stretched 265.5 meters in length and 29.5 meters in width. The landing area was angled at 8 degrees off the ship's axis. On the starboard side, there was a forward aircraft elevator while the rear elevator was positioned on the deck edge to save space in the hangar. The first of two 52-meter catapults was located on the port side of the bow, while the second catapult was situated further back on the angled landing deck. The hangar deck had dimensions of 152 by 22 by 24 meters and a height of 7 meters. Following her construction, the carrier underwent various upgrades, incorporating a wide range of technologies. Unfortunately, over years of service, Sao Paulo also faced several unfortunate incidents and critical system defects. On May 17, 2005, there was an explosion in the engine room's steam network, causing extensive damage to the propulsion system. The repair process took a significant amount of time, and Sao Paulo was not expected to return to service until 2013. Calamity struck again in 2012, when another devastating fire delayed the restoration efforts further. With ongoing repairs and plans to replace the carrier's propulsion system, in 2016, the ship's catapult was reported to be malfunctioning. The ship would require thorough repairs and maintenance every three months. The Brazilian Navy was struggling to operate the carrier as efficiently as anticipated. Mounting Pressure Sao Paulo held a special place in the hearts of Brazilians. Nevertheless, the future of the iconic flagship, unique across South America, became uncertain once it was decommissioned in 2018. The Brazilian government had plans to sell the ship for dismantling, while there were proposals to preserve and transform her into a museum. In March 2021, 
Sao Paulo was sold to a Turkish company, SOK Deniz Cilic, for dismantling, who paid around $1.9 million at auction. The plan was to dismantle Sao Paulo at a ship recycling facility in Izmir, Turkey, called Aliaga, but these plans were soon interrupted. Turkish environmental activists became outraged at the idea of scrapping the ship in Izmir, accusing Brazilian officials and the ship's owning company of downplaying the presence of hazardous materials on board. Due to mounting pressure from these environmental groups, the Turkish Environment Ministry cancelled the ship's clearance and retracted permission to dock, even though she had already reached Gibraltar with the help of a tugboat. Simultaneously, the Folk Sao Paulo Institute, a non-governmental organization in Brazil, fought hard to keep the iconic ship in the country and transform it into a naval museum to educate the Brazilian public about naval matters. They even went to court to try to get the Turkish company's contract cancelled. The vessel, in dire need of maintenance by that point, had no choice but to head back to Brazil. Eventually, the Ministry of Defense made a decision that disappointed many Brazilians. Good Intentions Upon her humiliating return home, the dilapidated vessel encountered similar obstacles as civilian officials in Brazil refused to grant her permission to dock. Making matters worse, the Navy, for undisclosed reasons, declined to provide its bases for assistance. Consequently, the ship spent several months being towed aimlessly while her condition continued to deteriorate. As the NGO Shipbreaking Platform, a coalition of environmental, human, and labor rights organizations based in Belgium, stated, when Sao Paulo returned, rather than going directly to the Rio de Janeiro base from where she had departed, the Brazilian Navy blatantly refused to allow her to dock, neither there nor at any other naval base in the whole of Brazil. From then on, the situation only grew worse. By 2023, the ship's conditions were unsustainable. NGO Shipbreaking Platform accused, quote, on January 13th, a survey was suddenly conducted, showing water leaking into the vessel. The ship was given about four more weeks by the salvage master before it might no longer be safe to move it. Once again, the Navy refused to bring it to the dock for repair. Instead, on January 20th, the Navy suddenly forced the convoy 200 miles further offshore, announcing soon after the intention to sink the vessel. In a surprising turn of events, the Brazilian Navy made an announcement on February 3rd, 2023, reporting the sinking of the ex-aircraft carrier off the coast of Brazil in the vast Atlantic Ocean. The Navy made it clear that they successfully managed this unexpected sinking due to their technical expertise and safety skills. Their primary goal was to prevent logistical, operational, environmental, or economic losses to the Brazilian state. But the repercussions would be tremendous. Mitigating Impacts after the Justice Department denied a request for intervention by the Public Prosecutor's Office, the Navy was granted complete authority to handle the ship as they pleased. In a recent announcement, the Navy emphasized that the ship's hull had severely deteriorated, making an uncontrolled sinking inevitable. In addition, officials had previously decided that the 30,000-ton carrier would be intentionally sunk off the coast of Pernambuco State. They carefully selected a remote location, ensuring it would be far away from environmentally protected zones or areas with undersea cables. The official statement by the Brazilian Navy clarified, quote, The location for the hull's final disposal, 350 kilometers from the coast, and with a depth of approximately 5,000 meters, was chosen based on research conducted by the Navy Hydrography Center and the Institute of Studies of the Sea, Almarante Paulo Moreira. The analyses looked at aspects of navigation safety and the environment, with a focus on mitigating impacts on public health, fishing activities, and ecosystems. Still, Ibama, Brazil's environmental agency has denounced that the toxic material aboard the vessel could disrupt entire ecosystems, endangering the flora and fauna of the ocean, let alone poisoning marine food chains with heavy metals. Ibama's interim director of the Environmental Quality Department, Rosangela Muniz, complained that the agency asked the Navy for information to help mitigate the impact, including the exact method used to sink the ship, but there was no response. Frustrated about their failed efforts to recycle Sao Paulo sustainably, Mooney's and her team bluntly argued that the ship is an environmental liability. Likewise, Brazilian journalist Jorge de Souza asserted, quote, What causes perplexity is that this was done even knowing what was in it. An unknown amount of toxic material, including tons of asbestos, carcinogenic material banned worldwide, and most likely also PCBs, a chemical compound that is even worse because it does not dissolve in water and is transmitted to people through food intake, such as fish. 
After more than half a century of service, Sao Paulo will continue to be a talking point off Brazil's coast and a solid testament to its naval history. Thank you for joining us on this thrilling journey through dark seas. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this documentary. To continue experiencing more fascinating content from around the world, don't forget to subscribe and show your support with a like. And if you're craving more military prowess and epic battles, explore the other incredible Dark Documentaries channels. We appreciate your viewership. Stay tuned.